this is me. And this is the love of my life and partner in crime. Two years ago, we traded our stable corporate lives for a more adventurous and sustainable lives as digital nomads at sea. Follow along as we discover new places and build our businesses one anchorage at a time. Ready? We are running! Now we finally managed to finish the installation. So what we did last was we tightened all the connections again to make sure everything is closed properly. Sealed them off with a silicone spray for corrosion protection and doubled the cables. All the cables from the batteries out towards the switch and the fuse and the bus bars, we doubled. We did that to make sure that uh, the voltage and the current is distributed uh, more evenly and we get less heat. All our batteries are connected for 12 volt system. We go out of the negative terminal into the shunt and have a small battery monitor there so we can see at the app the state of charge, everything that flows in and out of it. It's, it's really amazing. We have a small temperature monitor here uh, at, at the highest point directly at the battery so it uh, measures the temperature when everything is closed and we can monitor that precisely. And then from the shunt, we go to our negative bus bar and from there distribute it to all our loads and MPPTs or chargers, basically. Here we got our uh, load resistor for the wind generator. So in case it produces too much uh, energy, all the energy goes into here and it gets a bit hot. On the positive side, we go with two same length cables into the fuses and then from the fuses to the switch. We have two switches, one to switch off the wind generator, like we said already in the last video. Check it out, really nice one. And the switch for uh, the general. Really important here that we keep the cables or that we kept the cables from the batteries to the fuse as short as possible. And the same goes then afterwards. Like in general, we always try to have the cables uh, running as low as possible. Uh, there's a Victron app actually for that, where you can calculate the voltage drop uh, depending on the diameter of uh, cable you use and how much you're gonna lose. So we use 95 millimeter square millimeter uh, cables for uh, the batteries, batteries to the fuse and to the switch and then to the bus bar and 70 millimeters to connect our Victron to the bus bar. So for the Victron we entered with uh, double wires two, two for plus, two for a minus. The Victron MultiPlus is our inverter so basically it's taking the 12 volts and transforms it so we can use our normal power plugs and when we are on shore it charges our batteries so shore power goes into a circuit breaker then into the Victron and then it charges our battery bank and our starter battery so it can charge two batteries and from there we go back with the 220 volts to our main distribution panel very neat thing here is that there is a lot of manual uh, connectors and possibilities to control it remotely. So we have another cable laid here to our NAV table where we are able to switch it off on or uh, switch it to charger only from remote without opening the panel. This unit actually was the most heaviest of them all. So now in retrospect, we should have placed it somewhere else, but we don't have space anymore. So from the batteries we get 12 volt, which the inverter then transfers to 220 volts and we have our normal power outlets like you guys have at home. It's like a miracle. So to charge those up we have about 600 watts of solars and 400 watts of wind. 
So for that, we have like four different chargers, like we have for each position of the solar panels, we have a different MPPT and another one for our wind generator. So depending on the position where the sun goes, where there might be shade, uh, different type of uh, panels, we have different chargers for them. Solar panel choices we took on the Bimini, we have two times 160 watt flexible solar beyonds. Output is really good, they are not getting hot, so far no issues with them. We have two uh, 100 watt panels on the side, those were the ones we bought during our Corona voyage from Cyprus, because our previous panel flew off in Israel. So check out this episode, it's really interesting. And we have a small panel on the deck with 70? 70, 75. 75 watts from Solbian glued on the deck. So with that we cover more or less all the solutions. We can put this panel on the port side, for example, if we are in the Mediterranean, we had more sun on the port side. Now here in the Caribbean, we have more sun on the starboard side, for example. We can adjust it. So depending on state of the sun, um, we can change the angle of the whole mechanism. Would we do it again? Definitely. The question before for us was if we are doing Davids or a whole structure above our platform, but it would limit a lot the space. Like We would lose the best view in the world. Yes. <laughs> no. We don't want that. We have a lot of space here in the cockpit and it is already crammed, so we don't want to have more stuff here. And with the good Solbion uh, panels above, we don't need other panels or more energy, basically. It would have made everything a bit more complicated, plus it is very expensive, so we chose not to. And so far, we are still happy with it. We are able to store the dinghy up front, so we don't need any Davids. Two important things when choosing the solars and the wind generator. So we chose the best products on the market because if you have thin, flexible panels, the output most of the time is not enough or comparable with uh, rigid panels. Now we see one-to-one, -one, we have both on a Victron, we see in the app that they are producing the same, those mostly more because there's a bit of more um, wattage on the panels. And the same goes for the wind generator, because there's a lot of wind generators out there, but the output of most of them requires a lot of wind. And the, the super wind we got, it produces energy already with uh, lower winds. So if we have like 10 uh, to 15 knots, we can already see the influence on our battery monitor. And it is silent. It is really amazing because when we are at anchorages, we hear not ours, but the wind generators all around us, which is amazing. Like, yeah, we're really, really, really happy about the wind generator and the, the solars that we got. And the batteries. And the batteries, for sure. Without the batteries, we could not go anywhere. <laughs> and they changed our life completely. But yeah. Amazing, really happy for that. Lithium has a lot of advantages and a lot happened in the last years. So they are really safe now and a good option, like an amazing option or the best option for, uh, for sailors here. Not only can we discharge them completely and uh, recharge them and use all the scope of energy in there, but they are also way lighter and maintenance free. So basically for 10 years, we don't have to worry about anything. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> no. From a space perspective, we have like this amount more space than we used before in terms of length. And we have about the same weight, which is like incredible. Before we had lead acid batteries and we were able to use them only for like 20% range and we had like 280 amp hours truck batteries which yeah brought us through a day more or less like at the end of a day if we charged our notebooks we were already done and we struggled a lot just to make you understand how life-changing the batteries were before the only 220 outlet when we were out at anchor was here our little inverter and it did not even hold enough 
power to run yeah basically nothing we could not charge the notebooks fully um, we could not use the mixer so cooking was very limited <laughs> we can finally use all our toys like crazy for cooking we can plug it into the normal plug without having to worry about the batteries or the inverter breaking down hopefully Should I try? Go. Turbo! <laughs> and now we can just use every plug we have, like in all rooms, for example, and use it like here were at home. And yeah, don't even think about how much energy we would need. What is our current battery status? 99.9. <laughs> oh no! It was 100 a, a minute before. No, oh, like no. over the last few weeks, we've seen that the battery is never going under 90%. So when we use it on our daily basis with one time water making, for example, or one time washing machine, charging the notebooks like twice, phones, everything, iPads, no problems at all. We were able to test it excessively. Like the first week we run everything. Like the whole day I did washing laundry machine for like three, four times, like two times with 60 degrees and two times normal. And we managed to go down to 70%. And then it took a bit to get it up again because back in Dominica, it was way more cloudy. Now I think we have a very good system between solars and wind generator. In the Caribbean, wind is always, always here. Like literally always we have at least 15 to 25 knots. And the wind generator is really a gem because it charges the batteries throughout the whole night. So even if there's no sun, the batteries get charged and on windy nights, we wake up with 100% again. If there's no wind, for example, we lose about three to four percent because of the fridge and mooring light. Ah, yeah, fridge, mooring light, uh, <laughs> mostly. And yeah, with the wind generator, he brings everything back in again. So that was really uh, worth an upgrade, worth it. Yeah, inside the cabinet. So here we installed a new box, basically with a new uh, circuit breaker. So we have one for shore power and one to uh, decouple the inverter. All the rest stayed the same. We took the internal wiring to the, to the box. So basically we can control the inverter from here, like inverter only or um, charger only, for example. And we can charge, what else? This one is empty, water heater, outlets ac power yeah nothing else we did here that was our battery installation and our solar so if you have any questions drop a comment or if we did something wrong also let us know more details about installation are in our discord with the electrical layout the costs involved how we connected everything more in detail. So if you want to know, join us on YouTube or on uh, Patreon to become part of our Discord crew and welcome on board. See you next week.